Run. You got your goo gels, got your water. Mr. Sleds guy is out over here today, pushing the sled at the old Beth Page State Park. And hoping for another, uh, I don't know, anywhere from 20 to 26 big ones. At a good pace, good long run pace, practicing fluids. Gonna run by, grab the water, the gels you put in your gloves. Helps out a little bit, and uh, yeah. So, let's get this started. Boom. Got your green car. And then you know what? It's another 26 big ones. And then juice, right? Got a juice. I don't know. So why the 26 long run? So, why do I do this? And how do I do this long run? Well, today was like an upbeat tempo long run. So it was a pace obviously slower than marathon pace, but not an easy pace. So I averaged about 550 per mile today, which is, I would say you wanted this around 30 seconds slower than your marathon goal pace times. So that's sub 520. And by doing so, the purpose of this workout is to build endurance and strength at running at a fairly fast pace up until around the marathon distance and then of course you're going to practice taking in water fluids goods gels food whatever right so it's basically a long run done with um you know practicing fuel it's basically just a marathon simulation for about the marathon distance you're going to spend a little bit more time on your feet than you were in an actual marathon because you're going slow in space now when you, when you do workouts, right, whatever it is you train for a 5k or 10k, let's say you train for a 5k, you want some interval workouts that are slower than race pace, like 10 by 1000 at 10k race pace, then you want 10 by 400 at 2 mile race pace or mile race pace, so you have workouts that are slower than the pace and faster than your goal race pace, and that's if you train for a 5k, well, 5K, well what for a marathon, about, about a marathon, right? You can't obviously, you know, run more than 26 miles faster than the marathon pace. I mean, can you? Probably not a great idea. So, what do you do? Well, you have some runs that are tempo runs at 4:58. Okay, so, you know, faster than the marathon pace or half marathon pace, six mile tempo run at half marathon pace or even a little slower. But then you have workouts that are at marathon pace, 12 mile tempo run at marathon race pace for me that's like 520 pace or 515 around that range but now you want to work around you know you got faster you got at pace but then you have slower than pace and that's where the 26 mile run comes in or maybe even the 20 mile progression run where you're starting slower upper six minute pace and the ending you know close to marathon pace but not actually hitting it so you're working that range that's slower than marathon pace and that's and that's the the range where you could run for a very long time, but your legs are going to feel like lead, basically. And it's going to feel hard to actually try to turn them over to actually run closer to marathon pace. And you may get closer towards marathon pace at the end, but hold back on that. I didn't hit any 520s today, or 515s. My fastest splits were like 530, so I got pretty close, but I didn't go past it. So that's very important. And, um, well, and then also, with some of these runs, you'll be running with tired legs. So, you know, you have probably have the mileage up at this point, about five weeks out from Valencia Marathon. And also, so Saturday was, you know, like I said, a 13 mile workout. Well, it was supposed to be a race, but unfortunately, being sick, obviously, if you look at my last videos, you know, it was just kind of like a hard workout and a bad day, but, you know, it was. You know, low five minute, 13 miles of low five minute pace running. I wasn't exactly tired from it, but it's like a workout, you know. And you do have the fatigue from that. And then I've been doing 20 big ones a day, 22 big ones a day after some bit back with full mile, full mileage and everything. So today, my legs, uh, first couple miles of miles of this marathon uh, run this morning, my legs felt like lead, and it took you know six, 10 miles really, really to warm up. But, you know, they weren't 100%, and that's okay, because you want to learn how to stay relaxed and push through it. So work work with your hips. Make sure your hips are turning over your legs, and that your arms are not tightening up and uh, any of that stuff. So, it's really a focus thing, and 
ran 234 today for for the run for 26.25 miles, which I counted. You could follow this run on Strava. And uh, surprisingly, my legs actually are not that sore. I didn't really grind it out. I, really, I didn't really run too hard that I was like, <sighs> you know, you're not going to be breathing heavy if you're going way below your, uh, a lot slower than your threshold, obviously. You don't want to be breathing heavy, but uh, I did them on hills. And for me, I tend to run faster up hills than downhill. It's just the way I am. And with hills, I definitely ha generally have better runs, better marathon pace runs. For tempo runs um, and intervals, Definitely faster on flats, but when it comes to these big long things, you know, 10 mile marathon pace, tempo runs, long runs, when I run on hills, it wakes up, it seems to wake up more muscles in my legs, more muscles in my body. So it works more muscles, gets a better work out that way, but then I tend to run faster, easier there. So I'm generally, I call myself definitely the king of uphill because, well, I tend to just, I tend to run uphill just as fast as I run downhill sometimes. Um, in mo you know, in general, for the most part, so it's like, probably because of all the mountains I've done in Sicily and Italy, um, just thousands and thousands of feet. Today, uh, I haven't looked at Strava yet, but I've got, probably got close to around a thousand feet of hills just in this run, in 26.2 miles. So that's a decent amount, so. So, preparing for Valencia Marathon. Got a, got a juice. Gotta stay hydrated, get your calves, never stop running. Always inspiring. I'll link below on Strava. El Coyote Loco.